so we can see i'm decreasing and increasing my brush size so make sure you are decreasing and increasing your brush size according to the part you're working on don't just use the bigger brush for uh all the image or a smaller brush to touch up all the image is not going to make the image look good so for the nose if i want to retouch the nose i'm just going to paint on the highlights like this first just going to decrease my brush size and paint only on the highlight the cheek right here i'm going to brush the highlight separately first so look at my brush size it's not that big it's not that small i'm just going to paint on the highlight on the cheek for this shadow area i'm just going to bring it all the way down like this for this shadow area hello youtube tunde here and in this video we are going to be retouching this image and in my previous video i did a quick um, basic adjustment for this image so this is how we brought the image into photoshop and what i did i just uh first of all i removed those straight hair as you can see this is uh the before and this is the after i removed those straight hair around the image and after that i did a bit of liquify for this image so you can see the face right now this is the before and um this is the after so i did a bit of liquify around the face of this image to make it look a uh, little bit slimmer so next thing i'm going to do right now i'm just going to remove the blemishes on her face and also do my focus separation and to remove blemishes on photoshop there are different ways you can do that but i'm going to show you how i do my own so i'm using the focus separation method to remove those blemishes but before i do that i'm just going to remove this hair right here that you are seeing on the screen right now and to remove that, first of all, I'll just pick my um, healing brush tool. And once I pick my healing brush tool, I'll create a stamp visible layer. So I'll click on Ctrl Shift Alternate E. And I've just um, merge everything I just did in a new layer. And I'm just going to use my spot healing brush tool to brush on the hair like this. And it's going to remove that hair right there automatically. So you can see we don't have that hair anymore. And I'm going to do the same thing for this hair right here. Just going to brush on it like this to remove those hair right there like that so we don't have those hair anymore so after that i'll just zoom out and i'm um, just for my frequency separation i'll come to my retouching academy and just click on frequency separation via gaussian blur and because this image looks so sharp let me first of all cancel it and show you how sharp this image is so because this image looks so sharp and i can see the details the photographer did an amazing job with this image i'll just choose a focus separation blur radius of about 18 or 20 for this image let's see 18. i think i'm going to be using 18 for this image and i'll just click on ok and if i want to remove the blemishes i'll make sure i'm working on my high texture copy right here and i'll just pick my close time to make sure my opacity is 100 make sure my mood is on normal make sure my flow is set to 100 align is check and sample is set on current layer with that settings i'll just come to my high frequency texture copy which is this first one right here and just increase my brush size by clicking on the square bracket key on my keyboard i'll just press alternate on my keyboard to sample from a close by area and just paint over the blemishes to remove the blemishes so i'll just sample with alternate and just paint over those blemishes sample with alternate and just paint over those blemishes to remove the blemishes from this image so that's how i'm going to be removing those blemishes from this image just click on alternate to sample and brush alternate to sample and brush just like that so that's what i'm going to be doing for the whole of this image right here so as you can see we successfully removed the blemishes from this image so let's see how before and after this is the before and this is the after so just take your time and see if there is any more blemishes that you want to remove when you are touching your image but i feel this image is okay like this now the next thing i'm going to do i'm just going to do micro dodge and bound to like make the skin to look even and just to correct some colors on this image so to do your micro dodge and bond all you have to do is um close uh, this folder right here and just click on dodge above curves and um your image is going to turn black and white like this now just come to your adjustment layer click on your levels adjustment layer and just move this your mid tones towards the highlight side like this to make it even more darker so what i'm going to do right now i want to do micro dodge and burn these parts that are dark are the shadows area while these parts that are uh, bright are the highlight area so i want to just make those dark parts look a little bit brighter 
and those bright parts look a little bit dark cartoon just even out the um colors and correct them so you're going to see the effect of that right now so let me quickly show you something let me just pick my normal brush tool and explain something quickly so this part right here that are looking dark i want to just make them look a little bit brighter this part right here and um this part right here this part right here that, that are looking dark i just want to make them look bright to so just even those parts out like that because i feel they're looking too dark and it's not making the image look good so I'm, let me just show you how to do that so to do that after creating your dodge above curves all you have to do is um come to your dodge pick your normal brush tool make sure your foreground color is set to white if it's not set to white just click on this triangle right here to make to set it to default and tangle between black and white and um come to your flow just change your flow to two percent so i'm using flow of two percent my opacity is set to 100 and i'm using a soft hand brush and after that just increase your brush size with the square bracket key and just paint on your dodge to the area which you want to make a little bit brighter so i want to make this part right here a little bit brighter so i'm just going to paint on this part right here to even those parts out because i feel they're looking too dark so this micro dodge album um, takes a lot of time. A lot of professional photographers use only this method to retouch their image, but it takes a lot of time. It's time consuming, but I think it's, um, it's going to give you the best results when retouching an image like this. So I'm just going to take my time to retouch it with this micro dodge album, but I'm going to show you the effect right now. So you can quickly see the effect of that. So let me just quickly do um, an obvious place so you can see the effect of that. And show you how effective it is so i'm just going to be fast about this i'm going to do the same thing for here and if you've not been using this method i advise you start using it for your uh, headshot like this it's going to take your retouching game to a whole new level instead of just using uh focus situation which is not bad but if you want to get if you want to get to the next level of your beauty retouch just make sure you are using this method right here. But it's the only disadvantage is that it's time consuming. So let me quickly show you the before and after of what we just did. So um, this is the before and this is the after. You can see those parts right here are looking even right now. So this is the before and after, before and after. So that's what I'm going to be doing for the whole of this image. And once I'm done, I'll get back to you guys. Okay. Now let's see our before and after. So this is um the before and this is after. The before and after. You can see the skin tones are looking even right now. And you can do the same thing for the body as well. But for the sake of I just did it only for the skin. So you can see how smooth the skin is looking right now. Even without our focus separation, you can see how smooth it is. So our uh, before and our uh, after. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to show you guys how to use focus separation method to smoothen out the skin as well. So to use focus separation method, I'm just going to delete this visual aid right here. Just come to your retouching academy again. And if you don't have this retouching academy panel, send me an email. I'm going to show you how to get this retouching academy panel. So I'm just going to use focus separation via Gaussian blur. So I'm going to use radius of 18, like I said earlier, because 18 works for this image. If you want your image to be just smooth, use a lower blur radius and your image is going to be smooth like cartoon. But if you want to retain texture of your image, use a higher blur radius. But I'm not going to be talking about that in this video. So I'm going to click on OK. So after that, um, I can choose to remove any blemishes if I'm seeing any blemishes on the skin. But I think the skin is looking good like this and I don't want, and I don't want to remove any blemishes. So I'll just come to my creative tune right here pick my mixer brush too and uh, make sure you're using a soft hand brush make sure you're using a clean brush make sure this place is checked and my mood is on custom my weight is on 30 my load is on 30 my mix is on 20 my flow is on 20 and this place right here is set to 10 and my sample all layer is checked so that's that for my mixer brush settings and once my mixer brush is selected i'll just come to my creative tune on my layers and just um hide this high frequency texture so i'm going to click on this eye icon right here to hide it and once i hide it i'm going to have a blurry looking image like this and the texture of this image are gone i just have only the colors right now so i want to use my mixer brush to mix the colors on the uh, image 
So if you want to use your mixer brush, make sure you are brushing your highlight separately, which is this white um, bright part of the image. And make sure you are brushing your shadow separately, which is this dark part of the image. And also make sure you are mixing your uh, mid-tones separately, which is the normal color of the image right here, as you can see. So to brush, I'm going to brush the highlight separately, brush the mid-tones separately, and just brush the um, shadow separately. And make sure you are increasing and decreasing your brush size according to the place you are working on. Because if you just use one um, brush size to work on the image, if the brush size is too small, it's going to leave some patches on the skin. And if the brush size is too big, it's not going to make the image look good either. So if you want to work in a particular place, make sure you're using your square bracket key to increase and decrease your brush size according to the place you are working on. So you can see I'm decreasing and increasing my brush size. So make sure you're decreasing and increasing your brush size according to the part you're working on. Don't just use a bigger brush for uh, all the image or a smaller brush to touch all the image. It's not going to make the image look good. So for this highlight right here on the forehead, I'm just going to um, decrease my brush size a little bit and just brush on it like that. So I'm brushing on it like that. And uh, for these um, little mid-tones right here, I'm just going to decrease my brush size. And just paint on that part like this. And um, I'm just increasing and decreasing my brush size with my square bracket key according to the part or according to the place I'm working on. So I'm just going to even out this image right now and just show you the before and after. Okay, I think it's looking good like this. Okay, it's nice. So for the nose, if I want to retouch the nose, I'm just going to paint on the highlights like this first. Just going to decrease my brush size and paint only on the highlight because I don't want it to affect the shadows on the mid side. Why for this uh, mid area, I'm just going to decrease my brush size again and just paint only the mid area like this. And I'll do the same thing for this side. Like that. Okay. Why for the cheek right here, I'm going to brush the highlight separately first. So look at my brush size, it's not that big, it's not that small. I'm just going to paint on the highlights on the cheek. Just like that. And for this shadow area, I'm just going to bring it all the way down like this for this shadow area, like that, just to smoothen it out. So let me quickly show you what we just did, the before and after, so you can see the effect and um, you see how good it is. So let me show you the before and after. So just look at what we just paint. So this is the before and um, this is the after, the before and the after. You can see we still have the um, textures on the skin. We still have the uh, face of the model and the image is looking a little bit smoother. So that's what we are trying to do. We are trying to make our image look as natural as possible. So I'm going to be doing this whole thing for the whole of the image and not just the face. I'll be doing it for the, uh, for the skin as well. So once I'm done, I'll get back to you guys. So guys, we are done with that. So let's quickly see our before and after. So this is our before and this is after. Can see how smooth and how good this image is looking right now so the next thing i'm going to do right now i'm just going to uh, make the colors on the skin match to give it an even looking color and to do that i just create a new empty layer pick my normal brush tool by the way there are multiple ways you can do that but this is the easiest way to do it once i pick my normal brush tool i'm just going to sample a color from the uh, mid tunes so i'll hold alternates to sample a color like this i think from here is okay so i'll sample this color right here so once I have this color right here, I'm just going to paint on the image like this. But you can see right now it's not looking good, but I'm going to show you how to make it look good and how to make it look natural. So I'm just going to paint on this part right here. Remember, I'm not painting on the uh, contour. I'm just painting on the mid tones, the highlights and the shadows, but I'm going to leave the contour and the makeup like that as it is. Because I don't want to uh, tamper with the contour at all. I just want to leave it as it is. And I'll do the same thing for the neck. All part of the skin, actually, that's what I'm going to be doing. Except for the contouring, the makeup, the eyes, the mouth, and the lips. And the lips, like that. So I know it's not looking good right now, but we're going to modify it. We're going to make it look good. 
So remember to always increase and decrease your brush size according to the parts you are working on. And if you feel you make any mistake, you can just erase it from an area which you don't want. So I'm going to erase it from this part right now. Click on my eraser tool and just to remove it from the part which I don't want like that. And I'll do the same thing for this side as well. Pick my normal brush tool and just paint on this part right here. Okay. And once I'm done, I'll come to my blend mode and just change the color to color. And I'm um, just reduce the opacity to about I think 40 works for me and after that I'm just going to click on it and just open the blending option and once I open the blending option I'm just going to drag this highlight part to this side and um, I think 170 is okay and I'll just hold alternate and split it and just drag this part back to bring out the highlights and the details of those parts right there I'll click OK but I feel this 40 opacity is still too much, so I'm just going to reduce. So I'm just going to reduce the opacity even more. So let's leave it in 20. Let's see what 20 looks like. I think 20 works for this image. Or let's let's leave it in 15. Let's leave it in 20. 20 works. And uh, another thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to come to my filter. I'll come to my blur. I'll click on Gaussian blur. I'm just going to blur it with a radius of about let's say um two. Two works for me, and I'll click on OK. So let's see the before and after of that effect I just did. This is the before and this is the after. You can see the skin tone are looking even right now. Now, next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to whiten the eyes and teeth. But this image, eyes and teeth are looking white already, but I'm just going to enhance it a little more, a bit. So I already have an action for that. So I'm just going to click on my actions and click on eyes and teeth. It's going to load. And what I have inside these actions, I just have my um, curves to increase the brightness, my vibrance to desaturate it, and my photo filter to add the aquatic filter to the uh, colors. And then I added the layer mask and I just inverted layer mask. So if you want to watch how to create actions as I did writing the action in Photoshop, I have a video for that. Just go to my page and watch that video. So I'll click on this, I'll click on this my layer tab right here and pick my normal brush tool. This time use flow of 100, opacity of 100. And just zoom in the eyes like this and uh, just decrease my brush size and just paint on it remember i'm using a soft one brush so make sure you're using a soft one brush like that and um i'll do the same thing for this eyes right here like this And also, I'll do the same thing for the teeth, like this. And I'm just going to remove it from the part which I don't want, like that. So let's see uh, before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. But I feel it's too much. I'm, going to, I'm just going to feather it a little bit and then i'll reduce the opacity a little bit so let's leave it in 50. i think 50 percent works for me for this image so after whitening the eyes and thickness i'm going to i'm going to do my global dodge and bond for this image right here so for my global dodge and bond just to make the um shadows a little bit darker and the highlight a little bit brighter that's for my global dodge and bond it's also contour dodge and bond so that's what i'm going to be doing next so i just click on my dodge and bond curves my touching academy and um, just delete this visual aid because I don't need it. Then just come to my dodge and ball layer. Click on my uh, my dodge first. Pick my normal brush tool. Just decrease my flow to about 4. 4% is okay. And um, just increase my brush size. Like this. Let me just zoom out a little bit. And the way I, I do my own uh, contour dodge and ball, I just um, prefer to turn off my focus separation so that I can see where the highlight is originally and where the shadow is originally so i can just burn them and dodge them so dodge simply means to brighten while burn simply means to darken so i'll click on my dodge pick my normal brush tool make sure my foreground color is set to white and just um just brush on the highlight to make it pop like that and i'll do the same thing for the cheek because i'm seeing some highlights on the cheek just to make it pop and also for this nose line right here i'm just going to work on it to make it pop and um 
also for this um place right here there are a few highlights i'm going to work on it i'll do the same thing for the lips to add some shine to the lip and also for this small highlight right here i'm just going to make it pop like that and do the same thing for this other cheek like this also for the eyes i'm just going to brighten those catch lights on the eyes to make it even more brighter like that and i'll come to my bun the same thing for the bun but this time i'm just going to burn the contour side so for this side right here that are looking dark i'm just going to burn it so i'm just going to paint on it to make it look even more darker like that and also for this place right here i'll do the same thing here to make it darker and i'll just do the same thing here just to darken this place out like that and also this place right here i'm just going to burn it like this and now what i'm going to do i'm going to burn this part right here i'm going to burn this part right here and i'm going to burn this part right here but i'm going to dodge this part right here like this and uh, if i feel i'm okay once i feel i'm okay i'm just going to come back to my focus separation and turn it back on so you can see uh before and after so this is our uh, before global dodger burn and this is uh after global dodger burn you can see this image is looking good right now if you feel it's too much you can decide to um, just feather it a little bit and i'll come to this side as well i'll feather the bone as well so i feel it's okay like this so after doing my contour dodge and bone the next thing i'm going to do for this image i'm just going to um, color grade it so the thing i'm going to do i'll come to my adjustment layer and click on my curves so i want to add contrast to this image so i'll use my curves adjustment layer so i'll just um, push my sliders all the way down this is my shadow slider down and push this slider up like this to add that s curve to this image and i'm just going to use my um color lookup table to color grade this image and to color grade this image i just come to my adjustment layer click on um color lookup table click on load 3d lots and just use one of my lots to color grade this image and click on load lots so i think i like this lot like this so this is the before and this is the after so this is the lot I used to color this image and I'm going to do another video on how I created this lot right here if you want something like this. So guys, that will be all for this video and I hope you learned something for this video. If you do, make sure to give this video a like so more people can see this video and learn from this video as well. I'll see you guys in my next video. Stay creative.